Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam. So excited to hear the remaining story, huh? I was waiting for you, Baba. <laughs> All right, I will tell you the story now. Now listen carefully. Bismillah. Prophet Yusuf alayhi salam meets his brother Binyamin. Prophet Yusuf alayhi salam had now become the controller of the granaries in Egypt. During the seven good years, the Prophet had full control over the cultivation, harvesting, and storage of crops. The Prophet saved enough grains during the abundant years. And then, like the Prophet had predicted, drought followed. And famine spread throughout the nation. The leaves turned yellow and not even a single drop of rain fell from the sky. But nobody in Egypt died of hunger, for the Prophet had saved more than enough grains for the harsh years. You were right, Yusuf, the king said to the Prophet. It's only because of you that our people are not suffering. All our neighbors are asking for our help. What should I tell them? He asked. Allah saved us, the Prophet replied. We have plenty of grains with us. I think this is the time we should help our neighbors. We can give them the grains at a small price. Many lives can be saved. I agree with you, the king said. He then ordered to distribute the grains evenly to those in need. This famine affected Canaan as well. Prophet Yaqub heard the news of grains being distributed in Egypt. He decided to send his sons to Egypt to get the grains, all of them except Benjamin. The brothers traveled for many days and finally arrived in Egypt. Prophet Yusuf salam heard about the ten brothers who had arrived from a distant land. When they arrived to collect the grains, the Prophet immediately recognized them. But the brothers didn't. How could they? To them, he no longer existed. They had thrown him in the well many years ago. The Prophet then met them and welcomed them warmly. After giving them the provisions, he asked where they had come from. We are eleven brothers, son of a noble prophet. We come from Canaan, they replied. I count only ten here, the prophet asked them. Our youngest brother is at home, tending our father's needs. On hearing this, the prophet's eyes filled up with tears. He longed to meet his father and his little brother. Are you truthful people? He asked them. The brothers were confused. What reasons do we have to lie to you? They asked him. If what you say is the truth, then bring your youngest brother and I'll double your rations. But if you do not bring him to me, then you better not try entering Egypt again. He warned them. The brothers agreed and said that they will need their father's permission. The Prophet then asked his servant to place the bag of money they paid secretly in one of the grain sacks. After many days of travel, they reached Canaan. They greeted their father and said, We were denied some supplies because you did not let Benjamin come with us. The controller of granaries has promised to give us extra provision. If you let him come with us, please, Father, send him with us, and we shall take good care of him. But the old prophet said sadly, I will never let Benjamin travel with you. How can I trust you knowing what you did with Yusuf? Later, when they opened the grain sack, they were surprised to find their money purse inside. Look, Father, they said. The noble official has returned our money. 
This is a proof that they will not harm our brother. But the old prophet refused again. After a few months when they had no more grains, Prophet Yaqub asked them to travel to Egypt. We cannot go there without Binyamin, said one of the brothers. They reminded him of the warning given by the Egyptian official. The old prophet finally agreed, but only after they took an oath to bring him back safely. Allah is witness to your pledge, he reminded them before they left. The prophet blessed them as they set off for Egypt and prayed for their protection. The brothers traveled for many days through the desert and they took good care of Binyamin as well. When they arrived in Egypt, Yusuf welcomed them heartily. He prepared the feast for them and made them seated in pairs. The Prophet sat next to his beloved brother, Binyamin. He noticed that Binyamin was weeping. Why are you crying? He asked his little brother. If my brother Yusuf had been here, I would have sat next to him, Binyamin replied. That night, when the Prophet and Binyamin were alone in the room, the Prophet asked his brother, Would you like to have me as your brother? But Binyamin respectfully answered that he regarded him as a wonderful person, but he could never take the place of his brother. On hearing this, the Prophet broke down and said, Binyamin, I am your brother who was lost. Fate has brought us together after so many years. Binyamin exploded with joy when he heard this. Listen to me, said the Prophet. This should remain a secret for the time being. Binyamin agreed and he flung his arms around the Prophet. They cried and shed tears of joy. The next day when the brothers were loading the bags of grains, the Prophet ordered one of his servants to keep the golden measuring cup inside Benjamin's saddlebag secretly. When the brothers were ready to set out, the soldiers came running to them. Oh brothers, stop there! You are thieves! shouted the soldiers. When the people around heard this, they gathered around the brothers. What have you lost? asked the confused brothers. The king's golden cup, said the soldier. We didn't come here to steal, said another brother. The prophet had instructed one of the soldiers to ask the brothers the following question. What punishment would you give for a thief? According to our law, Whoever steals becomes a slave to the owner of the property, answered a brother. We shall apply your law instead of the Egyptian law then, said the soldiers. They started searching the bags one by one. When they reached Binyamin, they pulled out the king's cup from his bag. The brothers were stunned. They thought of their father and the pledge they had taken. They began to beg the Prophet for mercy. Yusuf, O oh minister, take one of us instead, they pleaded. I really want to know what happened to the Prophet. That I will tell you in the next episode. What happened then? Don't worry my son, it's getting very late. I will tell you the remaining story tomorrow for sure. Oh no. Shall I ask you a few questions from the story? Of course, go ahead, Baba. All right, now tell me what happened to the Prophet after he was released from jail. Prophet Yusuf became the controller of granaries in Egypt. What happened then? During the seven good years, the Prophet had full control over the cultivation, harvesting and storage of crops. The Prophet saved enough grains during the abundant years. And then, like the Prophet had predicted, drought followed and famine spread throughout the nation. Did anybody die in Egypt because of hunger? 
No, nobody in Egypt died of hunger, for the Prophet had saved more than enough grains for the harsh years. MashaAllah, that's the right answer. Now tell me, why did the brothers arrive in Egypt? The famine affected had Canaan as well. Prophet Yaqub heard the news of grains being distributed in Egypt. He sent his sons to Egypt to get the grains. That's right again. Did the brothers really steal the king's golden cup? No, they did not. The Prophet had instructed one of his men to keep the cup inside Benjamin's saddlebag. He did this to keep Benjamin at the palace. Masha Allah, that's very good, my son. I will tell you the remaining story tomorrow. Good night, my son. Good night, Baba.